All right, the first up, she is a filmmaker whose latest documentary, Citizen Four, is nominated for an Oscar and premieres on HBO February 23rd. Laura Patras, hey. <laughs> How you doing? Great to meet you. Great to see you. I'm a big admirer. Thank you. You're a very brave woman, and you deserve this Oscar. I think it's a fantastic movie. It's kind of a, a it's like a, a reality thriller. I mean, we see thrillers all the time in the movies, but this is a real one. This happens in real time. Citizen Four is Edward Snowden, mm -hmm. right? Yeah, it's the story of him contacting me and sending me emails and us exchanging emails for many months and then meeting in Hong Kong uh, with Glenn Greenwald. Right, I mean, what we're seeing, I think people all remember from a couple of years ago when Edward Snowden was front page news, but this is what we're seeing in the weeks before that. But, what goes on in the hotel rooms, the meeting between you and Glenn Green, he involved Glenn Greenwald too. Mm -hmm. And uh, I gotta say, I mean, you guys are just ballsy because you are hitting the biggest hornet's nest in the world. Mm -hmm the United yeah. States military industrial complex and living to tell about it. Yeah, I mean, actually, I didn't think I'd be sitting here to talk about Academy Award nomination. I thought right. a lot of other risks that we that we were facing before we went to Hong Kong. But, um, but you know, luckily, um, you know, things worked out. And, um, and so those, the, <laughs> the film tells a story about um, first my being contacted by Snowden and then, and then being in the hotel room. Most of the film happens in the hotel with, right. with Glenn. And, and Snowden said that, uh, you know, you wondered why he selected you. And he told you, well, really, the government selected you. That's because right. Because you had made films before mm -hmm. that got on their radar. Right. And you were being harassed, right? Right, yeah. Harassed and pretty badly. Yeah, it was pretty bad. I mean, I made a film about the Iraq War, and after I released that film, I started being stopped at the U.S. border. I was put on a secret watch list and um, was detained every time I returned to the United States, which happened over 40 times over the course of many years. And what would happen is I would, I would be f traveling internationally, the plane would land, and then they would do border they would do border patrol or passport inspection as people were getting off the plane. So every time I've, I flew internationally, border agents would be at the at the at the plane um, to to check borders and then I would be taken away and questioned about where I'd been and traveled so that went on for six years and um, and so it you know in a strange way it actually you know prepared me to to do the reporting on on this the Snowden and and NSA material because I became very good at you know protecting right. source material and and look people can agree or disagree on Edward Snowden and his place in history and what he's doing and being a leaker and whether those secrets were damaging. I think when you watch this film, you come away, I mean, it would be hard pressed not to come away with a few conclusions about him. One, he's sincere. Sure. He's not doing this for any other reason than he really thinks that this is the right thing to do for his country. And he's quite, a, he's quite a charismatic leading man for a movie, isn't he? He is, actually. I mean, the big surprise for me and Glenn when we got to Hong Kong, we expected to meet somebody in his 60s who was nearing the end of his career and not to meet somebody so young. But I think, in retrospect, it makes a lot of sense. I mean, here's somebody who grew up with the Internet and, and was really... Um, it was an act of conscience to say, like, the things that are happening, what the government's doing and spying shouldn't But if happen. they make a fiction version, I mean, Channing Tatum... <laughs> Zac Efron. I mean, I could, I could see that. But, okay, so he's sincere. He's also proved to be right about a lot of this, and the proof of that is that we've had a lot of government hearings about this. Mm -hmm. uh, and, in fact, they voted on one to really cut back on the NSA's activities. It got... It passed the House, almost passed the Senate, and I say almost, it got 58 votes. It's only in this crazy world we have with, mm -hmm. with the, the cloture thing that, the, you know, you can you can lose with 58 votes. So obviously his point wasn't that far off the mark. And I gotta say, again, the balls, and also Glenn Greenwald. I mean, I've had my differences with him, but he's got a set on him too, to do this. Absolutely. Because if it goes wrong, and mm -hmm. it still could, mm -hmm. I mean, mm -hmm. you could be, God knows what could happen to you. We know what the United States government is capable of. Well, yeah, well, we know that they've been going after whistleblowers and sources and journalists. You had Jim Risen um, right. from the New York Times who was here. So that's been their playbook, to go after people who expose illegalities. Um, but, uh, yeah, there was a lot of courage in the room. Uh, for sure, if I was going to be on the front lines, those would be, you know, I'd want to be there with Glenn. You, you still talk to Snowden? I'm still in touch with him, yeah. Because the last frame of the movie is... Just from a long shot, so we don't know exactly where he is, but uh, it's Russia, right? Mm -hmm. And his girlfriend is with him. Mm -hmm. They're making spaghetti. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it looks like it's not that bad now. 
Yeah, I mean, she, you know, to her credit, um, went there to be with him because she, she, you know, loves him and um, wants to support him. So, so they're. At one point in the movie, he says, you know, they probably will get me, but the point of this is that it's like a hydra. Seven more people will spring up and do what I did. Mm -hmm. But will they, is my question. Well, I mean, it just yeah, seems but, we live in a society that doesn't even care about this issue or their own privacy. I mean, here's the thing. I think, like, in the years after 9-11, I think we've seen a moral vacuum. I think the government hasn't come forward and that we've had citizens who've come forward as whistleblowers. So we had Chelsea Manning, formerly Bradley Manning, who came forward to expose things, and people thought no one's going to come forward after, after what happened to her, and then in, Edward Snowden came forward. So I think it's people who see things that they think are wrong and that, the, that in a democracy we should know what the government's doing, that it shouldn't all happen in secret and that you shouldn't have secret laws that impact all of us that we don't know about. What do you think about what Obama's doing? Because uh, he was asked about Snowden. He said, I don't think he's a patriot. And he, then he went on to say that, hey, you know what? A lot of the stuff that he was talking about, I was going to do. <laughs> but... <laughs> It seems like it really wasn't going to happen without this. No, this certainly not. It wouldn't have happened with, without Snowden coming forward. Obama also promised to close Guantanamo, and Guantanamo still. Well, that happened. that's not his fault. That's a congressional thing. Uh, he could have made it happen. He had. I mean, he. They, the Democratic. I mean, they had the the House and the Senate. They could have made it happen. I disagree had... with you on that. But but I I, I I don't understand why he is perhaps the worst president we've had on clamping down on the press. Ooh. I mean, he's used the Espionage Act more than any other president, right? Yeah, no, that's, it's, it's more than any other president. Um, I think it's nine times, nine people being charged under the Espionage Act and many journalists being put under investigation for doing their job, which is to hold the government What would you do if you were president? I mean, you, you must admit yeah. that the government needs to keep some secrets. There are bad mm -hmm. people out there. Right. I mean, what, if, what is the right line? So if play? I were president, I would do a few, I'd close Guantanamo. I'd have commissions to talk about torture. I no, would... but about leakers, about, about people leakers. who want to leak things. I mean, there are people who actually are defending us, and they are spies. We need certain spies. We need intelligence. I mean, where is the line? I mean, I think the problem is this sort of use of classification to hide things from the public that shouldn't be hidden from the public, and that's the, that's the issue. Snowden wouldn't... I mean, nobody... People aren't, like, lining up to become whistleblowers. I mean, there's a lot of risks. And so I think that we should, we, in a democracy, we should have more transparency. We should not be doing things that impact all of us in secret. All right. Well, I hope you win the Oscar. Stay out of jail. <laughs> Thank you, Laura. All right. Let's meet our panel.